All right, in this video, we are going to cover even more op amp circuits. So I'm just gonna cram a few miscellaneous ones into a video here instead of giving them all their own dedicated videos. So the very first one of those is going to be a current to voltage converter. So you have something that is a current source, and I'm gonna draw this upside down or opposite the way we would usually draw it with the positive side connected to ground. And you want to convert the current coming out of this current source, which could be something like maybe a photodiode or a solar cell, to a measurable voltage. So we're going to connect it to, and sorry, photo, um, I said photodiode or not photo cell, um, solar panel or solar cell. can't remember exactly what I said. Um, we are going to have an op amp with the non-inverting input connected to ground and a feedback resistor from the output to the negative terminal or inverting terminal and a load resistor to ground. And I'm not actually gonna do the derivation for each one of these because you can go back through all of the previous videos and see that, for example, if I define the sign convention here and have my current I through the feedback resistor, I know my input current there is gonna be zero, so that must be equal to the source, co sort, yeah, source current IS. And if you analyze the circuit, as I've done in the previous videos for the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers and differentiator and integrator, the equation you get is simply V out equals I RF. So you have an output voltage that is, sorry, that should be IS, proportional to the source current based on the value of the resistor. And you might ask, well, wait a minute, isn't just a basic resistor connected to a current source, a current to voltage converter based on the equation you would get there, which we analyzed much earlier in this playlist. And the, the difference here with the op amp is that it doesn't depend on the value of the load resistor. So in this case, if you connect another resistor with effectively your measurement device, so we go over ideal and practical voltmeters much earlier in this series. So if you connect some measurement device, which has some very, very high, but not infinite internal resistance, then that is going to affect your resulting voltage. Here the op amp keeps this output voltage stable independent of the load voltage. So slightly more advanced current voltage converter that again is just converting your current to a voltage that you could then read with something like a microcontroller. Next up in our miscellaneous op amp circuits video, we have the differential amplifier which as the name sort of implies is going to amplify the, uh, I can't spell, amplifier, there's an I there, is going to amplify the difference between two voltages. So I have my op amp with my non-inverting and inverting inputs. I am going to have two resistors connected to each input. So here I have resistor values R1 and R2 connected to input V2. Then I also have resistor values R1 and R2 connected to input V1 and the inverting input. So for this to work, it is important that these resistor values are equal. You have R2 here and R1 here, and then V out over here. And if you analyze the circuit, which again, I'm not going to do in detail in this video, you get V out equals R2 over R1 times V2 minus V1. So we are amplifying this small difference between V2 and V1 by a factor R2 over R1. Lastly, we are going to have the summing amplifier. So as the name implies, this is going to add voltages. So we have our op amp with a single feedback resistor, RF, we have our output voltage V out, we have our non-inverting input tied to ground, and then we are going to have series resistors in series with each source voltage. So V1, R1, and they're all tied to this point here. V2, R2, V3, R3, and so on. You can have as many of these as you want. And the output equation you're going to get is going to be the negative sum from lowercase n equals one to capital N of the feedback resistor value divided by the individual resistor value Rn 
times Vn. So there is that factor of negative one like we've seen for some of the other op amp circuits, but we are adding up the voltages, but you can do sort of a weighted addition. Or if you then divided by the number of voltages, you could do a weighted average based on your choice of the RF and RN values. So again, you can just keep adding input voltages here and it's going to add all of them up based on the values of these resistors, which unlike the differential amplifier, which we just saw, do not have to be the same. You can pick, you could make all of these the same if you just want to scale the voltages equally. And if you just want the output to be equal to the sum of the voltages, then you would make these individual resistors equal to the feedback resistor values so that this fraction is just one. But by choosing different values of the resistors, you can scale them to different levels. And again, I am not going to walk through the full derivation in this video, but you would do that as we've done in previous videos by assigning the passive sign convention to each resistor and then applying KCL at this node where you know the input current has to be zero. So now we know I have current I1, I2, and I3 coming into that node. Those must sum to equal IF coming out of that node. So if you do that and then substitute Ohm's law for each resistor, you will be able to able to derive this equation. So that's it for this video. Again, just a recap of three different kind of miscellaneous op amp circuits that I crammed into one video here. In the next video, we are going to look at using op amps for active filters.